Hey everyone, welcome back to more Yu-Gi-Oh! The Duelist of the Roses Redux with the uh, Rock deck. Last time we uh, we got our uh, pretty much optimal deck. Very little things that really make the deck better than it currently is. And with that we pretty easily defeated all three of them. So um, today we're going to just make further progress in uh, this side of the campaign so we're gonna face off against Mako I'd say Mako is usually one of the harder ones of uh, this area or this side also um, one interesting thing that I've uh, noticed and it's not uh, listed pretty much anywhere like on most of the wikipedia pages or information pages mystical elf is listed as the fusion just being rock plus female but uh i've noticed that it's actually rock plus level four and plus female so like the female character needs to be at least uh four stars because i looked at the fusion list and noticed that they were all at least four stars because I noticed cards like Dancing Elf not working and uh, Princess of Tsurugi not working. Uh, another thing is it doesn't seem like rocks are actually uh, weakened here, so uh, that's pretty nice. That also probably means that uh, Magician of Faith probably doesn't make Mystical Sand. But uh, it is what it is. I think that Mako will definitely be a, uh, well, I was going to say easier, but it's really just dependent on if he gets Roaring Ocean State. That's the one card I can think that he could uh, use to, like, spell out trouble for us. For the rest, like, oh no, deck leader ability, see? That's one of his strategies usually to just throw uh, Tears of the Mermaid at you. But because we're, uh, you know, in our deck leader range, it don't work. Alright, well, we cannot um, use what's its face. So I am going to just put you here, I suppose, as like. I was just gonna put you here to, like, somewhat defend again our uh, deck leader. Yeah, it's still. Oh damn. Yeah, this is what I was kind of worried about. We don't really have any uh, just straight up destruction um, cards, so. This is pretty damn scary. So we're pretty desperate on getting the Wasteland card because this thing will uh, destroy us otherwise. Well, then, or until we get Muka Muka, who. Um, if we get him late on, he's obviously able to beat over that. So yeah, uh, <laughs> this is pretty obviously fucking hype as fuck. As we just straight up got the Wasteland card here, which um, yeah lowers him to 3400. I'm sorry, Mystical, uh, what's his face? It's just not, uh, gonna happen. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. He is not strong enough to beat over that. Uh, 
However, we are able to uh, destroy its shadow spell, which is nice. We still need something to take care of Crab Turtle, but... He's got 1900 just straight out of the gate. He's gonna get. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. He's gonna get 2700 extra points. So. And he's gonna lose like another 300 something. So. All in all, we're in pretty good shape. He's also lost another one of the shadow spells. So. Should be able to pull this off. Yeah, here's where Muka Muka really comes into the rescue. Like just like that, four thousand six hundred. I mean, yeah, if you if you get Muka Muka late game, you just get like a monster that can easily like get to the max attack. Sorry, Crab Turtle, but uh, this is your demise. Oh no, Roaring Ocean Snake. Well, long enough, even with that swing, Muka Muka can just destroy you. Yeah, Royal Ocean Snake is, however, like an incredibly strong card. But, like everything else, it cannot beat the mighty Muka Muka. Who is. Yeah, Muka Muka is kind of like, he's the top five best monsters in this game. Because he's so like, easily abusable, like, it's just a, you don't even need to run a rock deck to make him good. You can just run Muka Muka three times and just 37 other cards. And just, just discard every one of those other cards. Ah, uh, Shiza. Well, I mean, didn't work there. Uh, you now have 2400 attacks. Let's just replace you for another Stone Dragon, right? Like that. Boom. Alright, and that's a victory. Very nice. Uh, yeah, if you're able to just completely negate it, uh, uh, or tra his trap cards, Mako becomes obviously a lot easier because, like, at that point, the threat is mostly just his couple uh, really high attack monsters that he has. Okay, well we got three in a row, but like honestly, I probably would have just preferred to get a uh, Tears of the Mermaid, which is just a straight up not bad card. Like it's just a straight up solid card that fits in most decks. But uh, that's Mako uh, defeated. I mean, he put up more of a fight than the other ones, but you know, 
a little bit of planning ahead and we win. I mean, honestly, if we didn't have the uh, spell cards or I mean the uh, uh, leader ability to just negate trap cards, then we probably would have been in a bit more trouble. But, you know, we're just not. Like, that helps. Right, bought the trick. Um, grave robber, that's always good. Oh, the giant soldier of stones, just three stars with those stat lines is just super solid. Like giant soldier of stone is just like. It's got to be one of the like highest three star stat lines for like any monster. Boom, wasteland. That being said, that monster did get a uh, couple of boosts so I think it got two power up right two dragon treasure so it's a plus or one thousand to it uh, yeah a thousand dragon doesn't like a boost it's attack power so you don't have to worry about that so if it's thousand dragon though it's still a little dangerous although it shouldn't really be thousand dragon right yeah it was power dragon so with only three stars, damn, yeah. Thousand Dragon has the ability to lower the star cost of monsters, so he can just uh, throw out a Power Dragon with just three cost, which is, I guess what a Dragon's more, uh, a Dragon is a good uh, deck leader ability, though. Like, they have good deck leader abilities. Uh, it's just that the AI doesn't really abuse them very well, like, the Two movement instead of one movement for your deck leader is tremendous in the terms of being able to just uh, snipe the opponent's uh, deck leader away. But like, like I said, the AI just does not use that like at all. Um. I suppose we're not beating that thing yet. But, I mean, this Winged Dragon Guardian of the Fortress King can take down. Yeah, that is the one trademark thing about Joey's battle against Joey is that he tends to just uh, quickly run away with his deck leader. Um, I'm gonna take care of this thing, I guess. The Thousand Dragon. It's the Thousand Dragon. I think you'd think Wind would uh, spellbound Earth, but it's actually like the other way around for whatever reason. So, uh, I point my finger at you! Thousand Dragon is dead. I suppose we'll just use its ability to get a wasteland card, sure. And then we can either use Millennium Golem next or uh, Sure Stone Dragon.
And this wasteland kind of just solidifies him not getting any terrain advantage anymore. There goes a new Atori, who's just a winged beast, right? I don't remember what its ability is. I can say that it's just gonna get dead. It's gonna die. Ah, that thing's fucking dead. What did New Atoy do, anyways? It's strong in tune, okay. Well, this card is face up in defense mission. All recovery values to the life point are doubled, okay. You know, super random, but um, I suppose that's positive. I mean, yeah, the ability to just go to the side like that is just a little bit annoying, but we can hit him with stone dragon like this. Take care of you as well. So, um... I mean, he's pretty much cornered, right? You know, I just realized that um, Joey specifically uses uh, wind dragons. Like, his thing is wind dragons, Kairos is light dragons, and Pokora is dark dragons, I think. Right? Like, that that's how it at least uh, comes across. I mean, Paradragon is wind. Wind dragon is wind. Thousand dragon is wind. And you got, like, things like New Atori, so. I feel like that's a pretty decisive. Uh, deduction, although, I mean, I guess it could also just mean, like, he's got that anime, uh, team. He also decided to put this dude just in, uh, attack position. Yeah, now I think it lives with like a hundred life points, right? Yeah, uh, that being said, we can just do this and uh, stone armadillo it to death. Hooray! Damn, well, we didn't get three in a row, but... Yeah, close enough. Looks like I underestimated you. And with that, we get the rose card. 
Which, uh, you know, unlocks uh, Jasper Dice Tutor, who... Uh, oh, no, never mind. It's, uh, unlocks a uh, shoddy, but... It's fine. It's fine. So, um, yeah. One thing I will say is... Uh, there's only a couple of rock monsters that we don't have. Like... The only uh, rock monsters that we don't have... Uh, we're missing three of them, which are... Um, Battle Rock, the Solver Rock, and Ancient Jar, and I think besides the Solver, like Battle Rock can just walk into uh, dungeon spaces, which is okay, I guess. It really doesn't help. Its that line is terrible, anyways. Ancient Jar, I believe, just makes it has something to do with spellbound turns. It either makes them go faster or makes them just not turn faster. One or the other. Uh, we're not having like a spellbound deck, so we don't really need it. And uh, the Silver Rock just destroys everything on the mountain, which is an honestly not horrendous ability. Uh, especially considering like so many opponents you face on the uh, you, you face so many opponents on the mountains that it's genuinely not a bad card. It's just. We've sort of at this point defeated most of the opponents we face on the mountain, like, outside of, I mean, there's still, like, three opponents we have to face on, like, mountain terrain, but that's about it. So, uh, yeah, I'll say one thing is, this deck has surprised me, it's, it's somehow often the more simple decks that become really good. Like, the thing with this deck is that it's just so easy to get your best guy up very quickly. And, like, even though it's, like, it's not particularly much stronger than, like, the zombie deck, it, to me, at least feels like uh, things are just, like, quicker. You're able to just progress more quicker and um, it kind of reminds me of the pyro deck although it's not as good as the pyro deck because god damn that pyro deck had a uh, molten behemoth which this uh, deck doesn't although so i suppose this deck has like muka muka instead but muka muka is mostly like a late game destroyer but to be fun i've been positively surprised by the rock deck here so um yeah everyone if you enjoyed uh, watching this episode, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It really uh, helps me out. And uh, yeah, have a wonderful day, everyone. See you guys next time. Goodbye.